Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Season 8 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, I'll be covering Support Sona, the Maven of the Strings. Sona is a support champion that first gives herself and her teammates some great sustain. Her W can pump out a lot of healing throughout the lane phase, making it a little bit easier, and it also shields your allies. Your Q ability gives you some really solid poke damage, which gives you some great harassment throughout the lane as well, and you also have some really solid crowd control, which comes from your ultimate. Your E ability then gives yourself some bonus movement speed as well as your allies, and you are a pretty versatile champion. Usually, you will go for a pretty generic support build, but if you do need some additional damage on your team, you could of course build AP as well. Now, although you are a fairly strong solo queue champion, you of course have some cons as well. Sona is a very squishy champion and you don't have a built-in escape ability as well, so positioning is very, very important. If you get caught out of position against a high damage champion, you'll have pretty much no chance. Then of course there is the fact that you will have some pretty damn low damage unless you do go for an AP build. If you are going for the normal Arden Sensor and Redemption kind of build, your damage is very limited. Now as for your runes, you want to go for Sorcery and Resolve, grabbing Summon Airy as your keystone. This will pump up either your damage or your healing, so it is an all-around solid ability on Sona since she does both. You'll then want to go for Mana Flow Ban just to increase your mana pool, and then go for Transcendence for 10% cooldown reduction when you hit level 10. Then for your last grab on Sorcery, pick up Scorch so your abilities do a bit more damage as they will burn enemy champions. Now in that Sorcery side, you will want to go for Bone Plating and Chrysalis. Bone Plating is really strong because it will make you a little bit tankier since you will reduce damage from the next 3 spells, and Chrysalis is really solid in the early game because you will get 50 additional health. Then when you get 4 takedowns you will get a nice chunk of ability power so this will help you do additional damage to the enemy team. If for some reason you felt like you didn't need that extra tankiness from Resolve, you could of course go for Inspiration instead, but usually it is much safer to go for Resolve. For your summoner spells, first of course you want to pick up Flash. As we know, you are a pretty immobile and squishy champion, so this can be used throughout the game over and over again to save your life if you get caught in a bad position. You can also use this offensively as well to find a really good angle to use your ultimate and stun a whole enemy team, giving your team a massive advantage. Now as for that second summoner spell, I'll pretty much always go for Ignite. This will add some really nice kill pressure and it is generally just great against heal, so it's really solid in the bottom lane. Against high damage champions, you could of course go for Exhaust as well, but usually I will stick with Ignite. Alright, now let's look at your abilities starting with your passive, Power Cord. The first part is called Aura, and this makes all your basic abilities generate a unique aura for 3 seconds that empowers you and your allies who enter the radius, and she will also have a 0.5 second cooldown whenever she casts an ability. So after you cast 3 basic abilities, your next basic attack will deal between 20 and 240 based on level, plus 20% AP bonus magic damage with an additional effect depending on the last ability cast. I will get more in depth on that on each ability page, but you will want to make sure after you cast 3 abilities that you are auto attacking for that additional damage and your effect. Next here is your damage ability, your Q, Him of Valor. When activated, Sona will send out two bolts of sound that deal magic damage to the nearest enemies, prioritizing champions. This aura will then make yourself and your tagged allied champions deal bonus magic damage on their next basic attack within 3 seconds. Then finally, if you use the power cord of this ability, it will deal 40% bonus damage. So yeah, in short, this ability here is all about dealing damage. You will want to try to harass the enemy as much as you can throughout the lane phase with this ability, but don't put yourself in a bad position. You will want to be somewhat close to those champions though so you hit them and not the minions. It will also be your most common power cord as well because it does some really nice additional damage. For your next ability we have your W Aria of Perseverance. When you activate this ability, Sona heals herself and the most wounded nearby allied champion. As for the aura, Sona and tagged allied champions receive a shield lasting up to 1.5 seconds. So this ability here is also great to activate before damage actually comes in because that shield will mitigate a nice chunk of damage and you won't have to heal as much. For the power cord, this will reduce its target's damage output by 25% plus 4% per 100 AP for 3 seconds. That makes it a really solid power cord if an assassin is jumping onto your backline and you can get this off before they start hitting targets, it will greatly reduce their damage and give your team a lot of extra survivability. Other than that though, you will want to use this as much as you can throughout the lane phase and team fights for the extra sustain and really solid shield. Next up is that E ability, Song of Celerity. When activated, Sona will gain bonus movement speed for 3 seconds, extended up to 7 seconds if she hasn't taken damage. 
As for the aura, tagged allies will also gain bonus movement speed for 3 seconds. Now as for the power cord, this will slow its target by 40% plus 4% per 100 AP for 2 seconds. So this is your ability that's great for finding picks and of course disengaging. You will want to activate this bonus movement speed to chase targets and that slow that it does provide as well from the power cord is great for getting a pick. In situations where the enemy is trying to chase you and you want to escape, of course this bonus movement speed is also great in those situations as well. And finally that brings us to the ultimate, Crescendo. Passively, this will reduce the base cooldown of your basic abilities, so it's great as you get points in the ability, you will get reduced cooldowns. Now when activated after a 0.2 second delay, Sona plays an irresistible cord in the target direction, dealing magic damage to all enemies struck and stunning them for 1.5 seconds. This ultimate does have a pretty decent range as well, so it does have the potential to stun all 5 enemies on the enemy team if they are somewhat clumped up. Therefore, this is a really solid team fighting ability, and you can use it either to help engage onto the enemy team, or as a way to disengage as well, stun them, and run away. Now as for your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. I then like to focus on maxing my Q ability as quickly as possible because it's some really solid lane harassment and it's great damage in teamfights as well. I'll then focus on maxing my W ability second because of course this is some pretty solid lane sustain as well, and that additional healing and shielding is great in teamfights. That of course means I'll save my E ability for last, but you will want to take a point early on in it at level 4 so you can use it for that extra mobility and of course a 40% slow from your power cord. Alright, let's look at some AD carry synergies, and first up is Draven. Draven works great with Sona because you can be pretty aggressive and trade with the enemy champions because you also have the healing from your W. Once Sona is level 6, your all-in potential is absolutely crazy because you will be able to stun enemy champions, and Draven can pretty easily delete them. For the next synergy, I've got Jin. Jin will work great with Sona because whenever Sona pokes the enemy with their Q, Jin can follow up with his W, root the target, and follow up with his auto attacks. You can also keep him sustained throughout the lane phase with your W, and give him even more movement speed with your E. Finally, you can hold the enemies in place with your ultimate, allowing him to get off his really powerful auto attacks or land his ultimate shots. For the next synergy, I've got Jinx. Jinx will work great with Sona because when you combine your Q abilities, you will have some pretty good poke damage together, and it's hard for a lot of bot lanes to deal with. The better part of this combo, however, is when you combine Sona's ultimate and Jinx's E. You will be able to chain crowd control targets for a very long duration, allowing Jinx to get off a lot of her own damage and usually delete targets. And for the last AD carry synergy, we've got Misfortune. Yet again, just like Jinx, when you combine both of their Q abilities, you will have some pretty good poke damage, and it can do a ton of damage to the enemy laners. The best part of this synergy, however, is when you combine their ultimates. Sona can stun multiple targets, and when you combine that with Misfortune's AoE ultimate, you can destroy entire teams together. Misfortune also lacks sustain, so your W is just an added bonus. During the lane phase, you'll first of course want to try to keep your AD carry safe as much as you can, and also poke the enemy with your Him of Valor. That ability can do a lot of damage during the lane phase to the enemy champions and can be very hard for a lot of them to deal with. You will of course also want to sustain yourself and your AD carry as much as you can as well with your Aria of Perseverance and also shield damage during trades. Keep in mind that warding is also insanely important so keep your lane warded as much as you can as well as the side brushes if you are against those pokey champions sitting in them and tossing out abilities. Now when teamfighting on Sona, you'll want to try to find an opportunity to stun as many targets on the enemy team as possible with your Crescendo. A well-placed ultimate can stun the entire enemy team and give your team a massive advantage in a teamfight. You will of course also want to toss out damage as much as possible with Him of Valor while also shielding and sustaining your team with your Aria of Perseverance. Finally, remember as well that Song of Celerity is either great for helping your team engage with the movement speed or disengage from a fight. Now let's look at some of those hard matchups, and first up is Blitzcrank. He'll be a pretty hard matchup for you because although your E does give you some movement speed, you are still pretty immobile, you don't have anything like a built in dash, so if he grabs you, you will be pretty much dead because you are very, very squishy. Therefore, against Blitzcrank, play very cautiously and don't go anywhere that he can grab you. For the next hard matchup, I've got Sona. She's going to be pretty tough for you to deal with because if she gets on top of you, yet again, you're pretty much just dead. Therefore, against Leona, don't get too close to her, poke from a safe distance, and when she does have her ultimate, be even more careful. This will allow her to engage from a really long distance if she lands her skill shots, so you have to be nowhere near her. Next up, we've got Nami. Nami will be a pretty hard matchup for you because her all-in is actually pretty decent as long as she can land her bubble. 
She's just like you in the fact that she has some pretty decent poke damage while also having sustain, so that kinda cancels each other out. As long as you stay somewhat safe and avoid her bubble at all costs, this matchup won't be too bad, but if she's landing her bubble, good luck. And for the last hard matchup here, we've got Tarek. Tarek is a pretty hard matchup for you because not only does he have a heal, but he also has a shield which can completely mitigate your poke damage. His all-in potential is actually pretty strong as well because if he lands his stun ability and starts auto-attacking you with his AD carry, they have a lot of kill pressure. Finally, his ultimate is incredibly strong in teamfights and can completely mitigate anything you do, so be very careful whenever he activates it. Alright, now let's finish this off with the item build which starts with a Spell Thief's Edge, Health Potions, and a Warding Totem. The Spell Thief's Edge is really solid because you will get some ability power making your poke damage and your healing a bit stronger, and of course get some nice gold generation at the same time. Of course, the sustain from the health potions and the warding totem are just kind of self-explanatory. Now, as for your core items, you have the Ardent Sensor, Redemption, and Remnant of the Watchers. The Ardent Sensor is going to be a really nice first buy because you get some nice ability power, cooldown reduction, and base mana regeneration, but you also get healing and shielding power, as well as movement speed, and a really nice extra effect. This will make it so whenever you heal or shield an ally, they will get some attack speed and do additional on-hit magic damage, so it is incredibly strong with your AD carry. Then, pick up the Redemption for its nice base stats as well as the heal and shield power, plus you can also call down a heal as well which is great in teamfights and just for saving your allies. Then, of course, you want the Remnant of the Watchers because it is your warding item that does have ability power on it, so you pretty much need it all of the time. Now, in between those core items, of course you want to pick up your boots. Boots and mobility are really strong if you're planning to spend a lot of time roaming, and if you want 10% cooldown reduction then you may want the Ionian Boots of Lucidity instead. You could of course also get Sorcerer's Shoes just for some magic penetration to do a bit more damage, or you could go for something like Merc Treads or Ninja Tabis if you wanted a defensive. There is a lot of boot options, and it's completely up to you. Now in your item pool, you first have the Athene's Unholy Grail. This is a really solid item because it has some great base stats, but also increases healing and grants you ability power as well based on your mana regeneration. It is a really solid item, and I grab it a lot on Sona. Now since you are a support champion, of course, like all of them, you could pick up a Locket. This is a really strong AoE shield, and it's really strong against champions like Brand that do AoE damage that is spread out, it can mitigate a ton of damage. If there is a lot of crowd control on the enemy team, you could always pick up a Mikhail's as well. This will break crowd control on a target, so it's a great way to save an ally if they are CC'd. Finally, of course Sona is a champion that can go for ability power as well, so you can get something like a Lich Bane or a Twin Shadows as well. Lichbane will add a ton of damage onto your auto attacks after spells, and it's a really solid item if you want to add some damage. Then finally, the Ghosts on Twin Shadows can add a lot of pick damage onto Sona as well, so if you're looking for picks throughout the game, it's a great option. But as for our full build, we go for Ardent Sensor, then we choose our boots, get a Redemption, Remnant of the Watchers, Athene's Unholy Grail, and Locket of the Iron Solari. You will have a lot of bonus healing and shielding from this item build, and you will also have that AoE shield from Locket of the Iron Solari, so you'll have tons of utility for your team throughout the game. But that covers everything I've got for Support Sona in Season 8. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you like and subscribe, and visit the video description below. I have a link to all my social medias, and I do also have a Discord server and a second channel that I upload daily to now, so those are some you should definitely check out. But other than that, thank you guys so much for checking out the video, I really do appreciate it, so take it easy, have a good day, and peace.